And remember the reason why you're doing this is so you can stop beating yourself up all the freaking time for not getting things done when you want them to, for procrastinating. Oh my God, procrastinators, try this. (laughs) Like This is a huge, huge, huge tool for you. Um, I just see this so often where people are like, I can't, I can't seem to get anything done. I can't seem to feel proud of myself at the end of the day. This is a surefire way that you get what you want done during the day. Welcome to the Life Coach Baker podcast. I'm Nicole Baker, life coach for perfectionists who want to set goals and actually follow through with them. I went to my first personal development seminar at the age of one. Yes, I was quite literally born into this industry. But by 15, I started to implement this mindset mumbo jumbo I'd heard so much about and it worked. As a recovering perfectionist myself, I've been able to set goals that are way out of my comfort zone and achieve them by doing things imperfectly, without self-judgment and without the fear of their opinions. And now I help others to do the same. So if you are capital D done feeling like a hostage to this a-hole called perfectionism, then this show is for you. My goal is for you to leave each episode with tactical action steps that you can start to implement in your life now. I may be in my 20s. I may have the voice of a sassier Cinderella, but I've been doing this personal development-ish since I was a toddler. So let's dive in. What is up, sweet, gorgeous, beautiful friends? Welcome to the Life Coach Baker podcast. This is an extra special episode because guess what? The week that this drops, I'm moving, baby. I'm moving. It is a bit of a crazy time. Um, So I'm actually recording this episode about a month in advance, and I'm not going to lie. It feels um, great. A, a, A small note to other business owners, if you know that you have a lot of craziness coming up, like the holiday season, the holiday season, looking at your schedule, like what are the weekly, weekly things you drop every week or the weekly things you work on. So for me, it'd be the podcast, social media, yada, yada. Um, Start batching that several weeks, if you can, even several months prior because then you don't have to like batch like crazy. Like I, this, this is what happened a few um, years ago. Uh, it was a holiday season and I wanted to have all of my podcast episodes for half of November, all of December and the first few weeks of January done. I decided that would be a great idea to do the first week of November, <laughs> all of it, all of it in one week. And um, I went crazy. I, I, and this is also when I was editing my own podcast. I literally don't know how I did it. I think I I just worked 12 hour days straight just on podcast stuff. And I will never do that again because it drove me insane. And I was not able to show up how I wanted to in the rest of my business. So since then, I obviously have not been doing that. But so what I would strongly recommend for any entrepreneurs who are doing things like moving, having um, the holidays and wanting to take that time off of like the, the normal everyday sort of things, um, maybe you're going on a trip or um, I will be doing this when I'm getting married, but really starting to batch the stuff several weeks ahead. So you only have to do two episodes rather than five <laughs> like in one day. So for the last few weeks, I've actually been batching two episodes um, and it's been saving my life. And Ariel, you have also been my, my sweet, wonderful podcast editor has also been moving to South America, like a boss. And I'm so proud of her and so excited for her. So also having that for her has been amazing. So just working with your team, it's been great. Um, I don't know why I'm getting into this, but just a word of friendly advice from one entrepreneur to another batch, 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 batch ahead. Always, if you can. Okay. Before we dive into this episode today, which we're talking about prime hours. Funny how we're talking about productivity this week. It's very interesting. Um, 
before we dive into the episode totally devoted to prime hours, which I still cannot believe we've never done an episode entirely devoted to, I have a quick announcement. I talked about this really briefly at the end of last week's episode, but I want to talk about it up front here. I am co-hosting a full day event with three other amazing, amazing coaches. This event is for any new to intermediate entrepreneurs who feel like you're flailing or feel like you don't have a clear strategy on how to build or scale your business. Or maybe you feel like you're screaming into the void and no one's wanting to buy Curtis. Um, Maybe you even feel like you don't have a clear marketing strategy that will turn followers, subscribers, people into customers or clients. Or, and I hear this one a lot in this world, in this um, perfectionist world, Maybe you feel like you are comparing yourself every damn day to other people, other entrepreneurs on social media who look, quote unquote, more successful than you, wondering what, what, why did things work out for them? Why are things not working for you? When will this ever take off? So on and so forth. And just giving yourself a huge mental beat down for it. If any of that sounds like you, this event was not only made for you, it was literally it was crafted with love and TLC and you in mind in every step of the way. And I mean that not in like a cheesy marketing way. I mean that for the most real way I could possibly mean it. Um, these are the three coaches and I, Wendy, Amber, and Sabrina, and I have all addressed this process every single step of the way as what do they need most? What do they need most? What do they need most? And it's been an amazing experience. We have had some beautiful brainstorming sessions and crafting sessions and creating sessions because of that reason. So know that if any of those are you, you're in luck because this is crafted for you. Like you are just loved and hugged in our arms. Um, The four of us, Wendy, Sabrina, Amber, and I have really and truly not only been where you are with feeling like we're flailing, feeling like we're screaming into the void, feeling like no one's freaking buying what's happening. But because of our areas of expertise, we've leaned into those strengths. We've trialed and errored, and we know how to not only build, but scale for incredibly successful businesses. And at this long day, day, long day, at this day long event, we're diving into sales how to get sales calls, email marketing, having systems set up for you in your business. So it's working when you're not working. There's that freedom that every single business owner wants. It is right there. Money mindset, how to charge and what to charge. And then of course, I'm coming to the table offering up perfectionism, overcoming it in your business, the power of CEO-like productivity and Oh, so much more. That is just the tip of the iceberg of what we're covering in this day long event. So, right now, the wait list is open and available for you to sign up if you not only want to get a serious discount for your ticket, like I'm talking up to 50% off, kind of serious discount. We love that. But also, if you're on the wait list, you're the first to know about all the goodies that we have in store for you, including. Sponsor gifts, which I did not even mention here. We have some sponsors who are offering up gifts. And I'm talking sponsors like leading businesses, brands in this industry. We we had some stretch people who we reached out to who were like, you know what? If these people say yes, that'd be amazing. If not, you know, we wouldn't be surprised. Let's just say we screamed and cried when we got some yeses from these people. We are freaking excited and they are being Oh, so incredibly generous with the things that they are offering to you all as a part of this event. So get on the wait list, get in the know. I'm so incredibly excited for this and for you all to learn from not only me on this, on overcoming perfectionism, that CEO like productivity, but how to sell, how to charge, how to overcome your money mindset, how to set up systems in your business so it is working when you are not working. Holy crap, that sounds amazing. And then also email marketing that turns people into clients, customers, rather than just feeling like you're screaming into the void. This is an event that all four of us wished 
desperately wished that we had had when we were first starting. So we're so excited to see it come to fruition. Again, waitlist is now open. Tickets for the waitlist will go on sale very, very soon. So get on the waitlist. It is all below in the show notes. Okay. Let's dive in to Prime Hours. I was on a podcast episode, shouts to you, Stephanie. You guys should all go check out Brushwork, especially if you're an artist. Oh my God, the Brushwork podcast. It's amazing. Head Led by the incredible Stephanie Scott. Um, And her and I were talking on her show and she had mentioned to me about like Prime Hours and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, yeah, like I think there's an episode totally devoted to Prime Hours. And she emailed me after the episode. She was like, I actually don't think there's an episode. And I was like, I have failed as a coach. This is wrong. Um, It was not really that dramatic, but I was definitely like, okay, we need to bump this up. This needs to happen ASAP because this is a huge, huge portion of productivity. Now I've talked about prime hours a lot in a lot of different episodes, but doing an entire episode devoted to it, we actually have not done yet, which I find very interesting. So uh, long story short, learning about prime hours changed the entire game for me when it comes to productivity, especially when it comes to being a CEO. Um, there are a hundred thousand million things we all need to do at any given day. And not just CEOs, I'm talking every single human being on this planet. We're all so busy, um, which I could go on an entire soapbox about, but I won't for right now. Um, And if we don't utilize our brain's strengths to our advantage, we feel like we're drowning. We feel like, oh my God, like I'm so behind or we're staring at our to-do list being like overwhelmed, stressed, anxious. And then what do we do when we're overwhelmed, stressed, and anxious? We do not tackle our to-do list. We run away. We fight, flight, freeze. And we normally flight. We go scroll through TikTok. We go... um, do something really easy that's not super urgent, like clean our desk or something along those lines. Now, the flip side is, because there's a lot of overachievers that listen to this podcast as well. The flip side is you look at that to-do list, you stress, panic, urgency of a house fire, do it. And then you wonder why you're so exhausted and wonder why um, your shoulders are like up to your ears and you're stressed out all the time, right? So When it comes to productivity, utilizing your brain's strengths is the most important thing you can possibly do. And I really think that boils down to um, productivity 101, using your brain's strengths 101 is prime hours because we all have them. So let's talk really quickly about what the hell prime hours are. Prime hours are a set of two to four hours per day that you are your most on, you are your most gutsy, you're your most clear, most creative, most um, least distracted, most least distracted. Sure. Um, Basically, it's a lot easier to get stuff done. Now, if we all looked at our daily to-do list or even our weekly calendar, there are some things on that list that are more intimidating, more stressful, feel like they require a little bit more brain power than other things. I'll use myself as an example here. Um, When I am doing outreach, when I am reaching out to brands, to speaking opportunities, to TED Talks, to um, what else, (laughs) to new clients, to writing emails, to so many other things, Uh, brands for events like the Empowered Entrepreneur. Um, When I'm doing all of that, I need my brain the most awake. I need my brain the most on, and I need my brain the most gutsy. And because a lot of those things are still not not really out of my comfort zone anymore. They used to be like like breathing into a paper bag kind of out of my comfort zone. But now I've expanded it because I've done it so much. But when I am doing something that is especially out of my comfort zone in my business, I am insanely aware that I need to do them in my prime hours. So for me, 
my prime hours are like um 6 37 to a.m to 10 really and truly it's very early in the morning for me now i get up at 6 uh 5 36 i journal for a little bit i have my coffee and then i go ahead and start diving into things now that does not work for everyone i want to be very clear now also another thing i want to be very clear about because i had someone hear that that was my schedule and they're like oh my god you work like 12 hours a day are you insane like can you preach healthy productivity Meh. No, I don't work 12 hours a day. That would be crazy. I definitely do not do that. On days that I am not coaching, I don't do my prime hours at 6.30 in the morning. I go to the gym at 6.30 in the morning because I don't want to be so incredibly on that early in the morning where I have nothing left in the tank to give my clients. I have to save it and give it all to them throughout the day. And, you know, not my, not many of my clients like to be coached at 6.30 in the morning, which I don't blame them. So instead, my days that I'm not coaching, when I'm doing more like CEO work, behind the scenes work, that is when I do my earlier days. And I end way earlier as well, like noon to two end. Um, but because I utilize my prime hours, because I was so heads down focused for three, four hours, I knock out almost all of my things that I'm trying to do that day because I am so much more on, because I am so much more clear headed. And because it's so early in the morning, at least for me, no one's on my phone saying, Hey, I need this. Or, Hey, do you have this? Or I'm not checking my email. I'm not looking at my phone. I'm not on social media. I am just totally zoned in and in the flow. Um, one of the questions I get in the, um, what's it called in the, in the, um, oh my God, in the raffle we just did for the podcast, um, topic suggestions, which thank you to everyone who submitted. Oh my God, there are some incredible sessions on there. I'm so excited to dive in. But one of the ones that people talked about was flow. How do you find flow? How do you get into flow? And we're going to do an entire episode entirely devoted to that. But, um, I'll go ahead and cut to the chase. This is a really easy way to tap into it. Like really, really, really easy. Now, why are prime hours so special? Um, For most people, um, not all people, for most people, it's going to be in the morning. Maybe not 6.30 in the morning, but maybe like 8, 9, 10, like earlier in the morning before we've had the weight of the day building up stress or before we've had six, seven hours of looking at our to-do list being like, okay, I have a lot to do today and like freaking ourselves out. Now there are some people and I actually coach a few of them who have their prime hours late at night, like ending at one in the morning, kind of late at night. That's fine. There is no right or wrong time for your prime hours. And I want to make that extremely clear. I had someone tell me one time, They're like, I'm not a morning person, so I feel like I'm broken. And I'm like, first and foremost, what do you think a morning person is? And they're like, someone who gets up at five in the morning and is super energized and goes to the gym and meditates and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, okay, what time do you normally get up right now? They're like, I normally get up at about 11. I'm like, what if you got up at 930 and did some of that? And they're like, but then I'm not a morning person. I'm like, who the fuck says morning person is only 5 a.m.? Morning person gets to be whatever the fuck time you want it to be. You get very heated about this because personal development is personal, right? And same thing with prime hours. Prime hours are very personal. My prime hours look very different than yours, look very different than my partners, look very different than my sister, my parents, my friends. And that's okay. That's actually beautiful. So I, I discovered prime hours very first and foremost through a book called um, Limitless by Jim Quick. I actually have it right behind me. Um, If you're watching on YouTube, hey Um, And by the way, when we get into the flow episode, entirely is going to be pulled from that book. So if you want to read it, I strongly recommend it because I learned all my um, ins and outs of productivity. I won't say all of the ins and outs, but a lot of the ins and outs about the productivity in the brain from that book. And it's become a huge part of my coaching, it's become a huge part of my personal experience of productivity as well. So definitely check it out. Limitless by Jim Quick. Very good book. Um, But 
I first read about prime hours through that book and I was like, interesting. Like I hadn't really thought about it. I heard about the phrase like eat the frog in the morning. So like it basically means like do the hardest thing first. And I was like, yeah, like, I think that does work, but like, let me try this out. Like really like devoting three or four hours just to getting the really, I'm not going to say hard shit done, but the scarier shit, the things that make me want to like shake my bones a little bit or the stuff that I've been putting, I've been wanting to put off or like the things that, um, feel like they just require a lot more of me. We all have those tasks. Maybe if you're like a a sales rep for a company, maybe it's updating your CRM that makes you feel exhausted. If you're an artist, is it social media that you feel like needs a lot more of your TLC? If you're a business owner, is it outreach? Is it pitches? Is it um, pitching yourself to clients? Is it outreaching to clients? Is it um, blog posts? Is it podcast episodes? By the way, I'm recording this podcast smack dab in the middle of my prime hours right now. <laughs> like It is 8.34 a.m. on September the 21st. Um, so keep that in mind. Like Your tasks during your prime hours are going to look very different. But here's how I figured out what tasks to do. Um, First and foremost, I I did an entire episode devoted to weekly schedule. These two episodes really go hand in hand. I highly recommend checking that one out. Um, So just keep that in mind. It's a few months back, but definitely check out the episode about a weekly schedule. Um, I think it's how to craft a weekly schedule that works for you. Something like that. Um, But I looked at my week and I looked at all the quote unquote, must do's for my business. I looked at all the things that I wanted to get done during the week for personal and business stuff. And I circled the things that were the most heady, the things that were the most taxing, isn't really the right word, just the most required, the most focused for me. And those were things like out, excuse me. And those were things like outreach podcast. Um, uh, what else, what else, what else? really, those are the two big things now. Back then it was very, it was a very different list. Uh, project time. I have an entire morning, really half, two half days devoted to project time. So if I'm working on a launch, if I'm working on um, a new lead generation, if I'm working on uh, a, a talk, a keynote, I will put that during those times. Um, so anything that requires a lot more concentration, if I'm doing an email campaign, definitely writing that during that time. Um, probably why there's so many spelling errors in it. Uh, it's just going to be a meme now. Um, but I, I really strongly recommend like looking at what are the things you have to have to do. I don't love that phrase, but what are the things you do during the week that do require a little bit more out of you? Write them down. And then ask yourself, can I do those things during my prime hours? Again, look at what your prime hours are. And by the way, this might take a lot of trial and error for figuring out, okay, like, you know what, today I'm going to try doing things from 8 to 11 and just putting it all in there. Um, And then it might not work. It might work great if you're like, you know what, nope, let's try 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. and then go there. Um, if three hours feels too daunting, try two, try one. I mean, like seriously, chunk this down, make it fun, make it easy. The whole, oh, that's a really important note. The entire thing about prime hours. And I hear this from my clients all the time when they start using them is they're like, wow, I didn't realize how easy this would be. I didn't realize how effortless it would feel. That's the point. (laughs) That's the whole point. We make life so gosh darn hard for ourselves that allowing things to be easy is kind of the name of the game. Let me, maybe even not easy, allowing things to be filled with ease. That's a better way of phrasing it. You do not need to be pushing against the grain your entire life. That is exhausting. When we lean into the strengths, into what works, into the things that feel easy and flow inducing, it becomes so much easier for us to not only be productive, to go after our goals, to feel like we're leaning into that achievement, to feel like we're leaning into growth, to feel proud of ourselves. There's so many benefits to letting things be filled with ease. And yet we live in a culture that glorifies 
the hard, that glorifies the, oh my God, this was so taxing. And I subscribed to that for so many years. I wondered why I was finishing my days feeling like I just sprinted a marathon and I had nothing left in the tank, but I'm not going to lie. I was proud. I was so proud because I was like, oh, you know what? I I left it all out there. I left it all out on the field. So that means I did a good job today. But then I had nothing left to give to myself, to my partner. And by the way, if I was if I was sleeping, I was definitely sleeping. When I was sleeping, I wasn't able to fill myself back up to 100. I was able to fill myself back up to like 60. But then if I emptied it out again, I'm back at zero and it was way easier to hit zero. And a lot of us are living like this. And that's why I really like tools like Prime Hours. There's a hundred others that I really like, but this is definitely one of the big ones because not only, at least for me, it gets all my harder, quote unquote, things done earlier in the day when I'm more clear, when I'm more focused, when I'm more able to give it my all. But then I, I know the, the time or roughly the time when I'm like, okay, now it's time to shift into some easier things because, which brings me to step two may not be the right word, but kind of exercise number two of the things that you did not circle. So AKA of the things that were not the heavier, more, um, focus inducing tasks, would those be considered more easy, more autopilot tasks? So for me, graphic design or anytime I'm designing a website, which I love doing. I like, I know a lot of entrepreneurs delegate that task. That's great. I might do that someday. I love doing it. (laughs) Like it makes me so happy. I so enjoy it. Um, so I actually designed the entire website for the empowered entrepreneur. I designed my entire website and I wouldn't have it any other way. I really enjoy doing that stuff. But it doesn't require me to be like super focused, super on. I get to do that a little bit more passively. So in the afternoon, I'm able to pop in a podcast and listen to something at the same time or um, do it at a coffee shop where I'm able to kind of like people watch a little bit. It just feels a little bit less difficult. But because I've already done my more focus heavy things in the day, I'm able to really release the reins. I'm really able to just kind of like let things be easy in the afternoon. Now, again, this is for me. If you're an afternoon prime hours person, flip flop it, do your easy shit in the morning, do your more more focused heavy things in the afternoon. This I'm going to go ahead and say perfectionists is not going to be perfect on the first try. It took me probably six months to figure out what my prime hours were, maybe not that long, maybe three months. It took me about three months to figure out what my prime hours were. And by the way, they still change. Just a few months ago, they were like nine to 11. And now they're back to 630 to 10. Like depending on what stage I am in, in my life, in my business, in my um, relationship, what's being demanded of me, I'll go ahead and be super honest with you all. Right now, because of moving, we actually, Brett and I actually, um, looked at a moving schedule and, or looked at our moving schedule. We have this huge spreadsheet that has every single day from like, I think 60 days out. I think it was about 60 days out broken down into what do we need to do this day? What do we need to do this day? How about this day? How about this day down to, um, because we've been living in a temporary housing situation um, that's been furnished and we haven't, we sold all of our furniture in Chicago. So we were having, we were having to buy a bed, a frame, a couch. Like, so it's like broken down into research couches, buy bed frame, all these different things for weeks. And now we're um, in the like changing addresses, getting utility set up, all that kind of stuff. And it's, taxing. I'm not going to lie. It is every night looking down, looking at our schedule. What do we need to do? We do have very specifically because we started so early, which was very intentional. We have numerous days off. We have like date days scheduled in there, which, oh my God, super side note here. Um, one of our favorite podcasting groups, sure groups, um, is coming to Denver in a few weeks and a week and a half. Yeah. In a week and a half. And we're going to that, like that's taking a day off of, of, of 
moving schedule, like, and just kind of doing that. We're putting wedding planning as like minimal as we need to in these few, in these two months, um, which luckily since we started planning so early, we were able to do that. I know that's very fortunate. And I know not a lot of people have that luxury when they're planning a wedding because it tends to be a little more condensed. Um, but for us, that was something that we did very intentionally. Um, but because of all these things being demanded of me in other areas of my life, having that early morning that done early in the afternoon, being able to go to my gym, take a few hours to work out, have a few hours to sit in the spa, which has been delightful. And to be able to come back, make a nice dinner with my partner and sit down and work on moving has been a really nice schedule for us. Now, when we move, it might look very different and that's okay. One of the things they want you to approach as you're looking at prime hours is you're trying and erroring and trialing and erroring. I would really strongly recommend approaching this from a mindset of this is not permanent and actually go ahead and sprinkle that everywhere else in your life. But especially here, we, especially with business owners, I see this really often if we're like picking a niche or we're setting up a um, payment or charge, um, how what to charge for a service. There's this panicking of like, but like four years from now, what if that doesn't make sense? It's like, great, then change it. You do not have to, it is not forever. None of this is forever. This podcast probably won't be forever. I, I see it being for a very long time because I love it. But nothing is permanent and give yourself the fucking grace to try things, to be a beginner in something. We, we've we lost the ability to enjoy being a beginner and to enjoy sucking at something and getting better and the gratitude and the, the gradualness of growth and, you know, being able to try something failing, try something failing, try something failing, try something, and it succeeds. Oh my God, yes. We've lost the patience for that. And that makes me really sad. And I am preaching to the choir. I am the pot calling the kettle black. Kettle calling the pot black? Pot calling the kettle black. There you go. And I I have to remind myself constantly You get to be a beginner. You get to be a beginner, especially among perfectionists. We see so often on social media, people, you know, posting, um, did this thing, landed a 460 on my skateboard. I don't know. (laughs) I've never seen anyone post that. We're making shit up. Um, But we see that and just think that they like did it on the first try. Even though logically we understand they probably didn't, they probably took a lot of trial and error, probably took a year or six months of, you know, practice and practice and practice. But we don't subconsciously, when we see a social media post, our brain does not fill in that journey. It just sees the end result. And then we now cut straight to the end result with us and all the things we're wanting to do. I'm not entirely blaming social media for this, or maybe... Maybe I am a little bit actually, but because of that, because of that conditioning that we get daily, because most of us look at social media daily, it now tells our brain, we can't be a beginner at things. We have to succeed on the first try or else we fail. And that's disgusting. We get to be a beginner. So not only in prime hours, this is with everywhere in life, you get to be a beginner period. You get to enjoy being a beginner. So what I would really recommend you doing is looking at your day. What are, or looking at your week, excuse me, look at your week. What are the things that are bigger tasks? What are the things that feel more focus inducing? And by the way, it might not be the same thing every week, but you might know day of what those things might need to be. So block out just time, prime hours time, prime hours time, prime hours time, and day of, ow, day of decide what those prime hour tasks are going to be. It does not need to be planned out weeks in advance. My schedule tends to be pretty 
um, similar week to week, eh, but fair, sort of. But I say blocks of time for outreach, blocks of time for um, uh, speaking opportunity outreach or application, excuse me, blocks of time for social media, blocks of time for podcasts. It's not the same things every week, but for me, the blocks of time don't change that much, but I change what I'm doing during the blocks of time, if that makes sense. So 6.30 a.m. rolls up and I'm like, okay, this morning I need to, um, or I want to work on some speaker applications. Great. I have these, these, and these, and these, and these. Great. I'm going to work on these during that time. Boom. I decide day of, but I have that time blocked out because that is my time. That is time that makes Nicole a sane person. (laughs) Again, it's not going to be the same time for you or hell, maybe it is. Maybe you're also a 630 in the morning prior hours person and I hug you, but try blocking out times a few days at a time. So maybe if you want to try out doing 330 in the afternoon, block out 330 for three days. Great. Maybe it doesn't really work out. Okay. Block out 9 a.m. Maybe it doesn't really work out. Block out 11 p.m. Whatever it is. But just start blocking it out. And remember, the reason why you're doing this is so you can stop beating yourself up all the freaking time for not getting things done when you want them to, for procrastinating. Oh my God, procrastinators, try this. <laughs> like This is a huge, huge, huge tool for you. Um, I just see this so often where people are like, I can't, I can't seem to get anything done. I can't seem to feel proud of myself at the end of the day. This is a surefire way that you get what you want done during the day. Now that does not mean you're going to slam 50 hours of work into two hours for the love of God. You are not a robot. That's not how this works. It will still require you to say, okay, I got this stuff done. I still have this stuff to go, but I get to be grateful for the stuff I just got done. We forget we're allowed to do that. In fact, here's another exercise I strongly recommend for people. At the very end of the day, write down three things you did do that day. Not didn't, did do that day. What this does is it trains our brain to stop looking only at what we haven't done, what we haven't done, what we haven't done, which then fills us with this idea that A, we're not enough as we are, and B, that we need to keep going, keep going, keep going. And that's exhausting. So instead, what this does is it allows us to look back and say, oh, that's right. This is what I did do. Um, I created this exercise after I realized for a few months I was going to bed and I was only looking at what I hadn't done. And I was beating myself up for it. I was feeling exhausted. I was feeling um, sad. I I don't know another word for it. I was feeling really sad. And I finally started switching it up, looking at what I had done. And the first few times I did it, it was really difficult because I was like, what did I do today? Because I was so focused on what I hadn't done that it, I literally deleted the shit that I did do that day. So it took me a while to kind of like open that neural pathway back up again to like start looking backwards. And it really made a huge difference. So you can have your prime hours, just list off the things you did in your prime hours during that time. It is ridiculously helpful. And again, work with your brain rather than against it. I've hammered this in quite enough. Okay, my sweet friends, let's go straight into segments. Um, I'm going to make this a bit of a shorter episode. I don't know. I actually don't know the time on this right now, but we're going to see it's a shorter episode this week because I'm moving, even though I'm recording this in September. Lol. Um, so how was I a perfectionist this week? Um, this was a tough one. Not because I was so imperfect this week that it was tough for me to to figure one out. Instead, it was actually the polar opposite. I have such an obvious answer and I was mortified, absolutely mortified by it. I went to an Evox training this week, which is basically this, like you read off some affirmations and this computer reads the waves, the, the emotional, the frequency waves that are in the room. And it tells you like, 
these are the blocks that you're having. These are the limiting beliefs that you're having. And it, it doesn't like, like it, it's under certain categories and it's kind of more broad categories. And then you get to see like, okay, like that's, yeah, absolutely. That one's a big one for me and all this kind of stuff. It was really cool. Like I, I am fascinated at how personal development and technology are marrying together, especially with brainwaves, especially with like um, things like bio and neurofeedback. That stuff is ridiculously cool. Um, so this is kind of me dipping my toe into it and really understanding like how this stuff works. And I'm not going to lie. I was a total skeptic at first. I was like, how does a fucking machine read my energy frequency brain waves? Like that doesn't make any sense. But um, one of the neuroscientists I was working with, she's incredible and amazing and really dove into like, here's the ins and outs of it. And I was like, okay, my science brain is, is at peace. Thank you. <laughs> like, I appreciate it. And when we got into the room, because it was in a group setting, when we got into the room, um, something shifted in me, like majorly. I am not a very vulnerable person. Um, You would never expect it from this podcast episode. But normally when I'm talking to people, um, especially when it's like a, like not a coach setting, when it's like a me talking to another person and just like kind of being another person with another person. Um, I don't tend to talk very much. I tend to really let them talk and really get into like the, um, I'd love to know like about you and all this kind of stuff. And, um, so group setting coaching is hard for me. Um, especially when it comes to being vulnerable, because I tend to not want to take up too much time and that's something I'm working on. Um, but I got into this room and something just shifted in me. It's almost like all these emotions just like started coming up to the surface. And I was even just sitting down and tearing up. Nothing had happened. <laughs> like nothing. I hadn't even started reading affirmations yet. And I just started tearing up. And immediately that perfectionist brain went into hyperdrive. Like, why are you doing this? you're, you look like such a freak right now. No, like no one else is crying. You should not be doing this. Like you should not be emotional right now. This is embarrassing. Nicole, stop it. And I'm not, it sounded just like that. And like, I, I hate to even sh- say this on the podcast, but I, um, I really want to be vulnerable with you guys and, and share truly how I was a perfectionist every single week. So, you know, I'm still working on it too. Um, and I got, I got so embarrassed. I got so mortified is really the word for it. And someone kind of looked at me and been like, oh, are you, are you okay? And immediately I was like, crack jokes, Nicole, crack jokes, like make it light, make it light. No one can know like why you're feeling this way. No one can know. And I was like, whoa, what's going on? And it took me kind of a second after, you know, cracking a few jokes, making people laugh a little bit. Um, suppressing my emotions is really what I was doing for calling a spade a spade. Um, but I was talking to the neuroscientist who was leading us through it. And she was like, you know, like there's a lot of different energy. I have this, this room set up. So it brings emotional energy to the surface. Like there's crystals, there's a bunch of stuff set up and I'm not going to lie. I'm not a knower of crystals. I don't really subscribe to crystals. Like that's just me personally. Um, I subscribe to them now. So like, let me tell you, because I was just like, I, nothing. I I truly do not know what else could have explained me being totally fine outside, and the second I walk in, it was like, oh my god, what's going on? Like my entire energy and my body changed. And as we went through the affirmations, um, you would like say an affirmation into this microphone, into this computer, and it would read whether or is a bullshit meter basically is how she described it, which I loved. It would read like, do you believe this? Do you not believe this? Why do you not believe this? Is it because of rigid beliefs? Is it because of all these different things? And it was so cool. God, it was so cool. Um, but as we started going through them, I started realizing as I was saying certain things, certain things felt so easy for me to say. And then certain other ones felt I mean, I just immediately started crying when I would say them and we had like a little share time after each, each affirmation. And I was like, you know what, Nicole, like something in you needs to bear, bear soul a little bit. And, um, it was this one about like 
being worthy and being seen truly as you are. And I started sharing and I just started weeping. Like I was tearing up earlier. This was when I like started, like my voice broke and everything just like fell apart. <laughs> like, And again, that little voice went off in my head. Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. You're taking away from everyone else's experience. You're making this all about you. What do you, who do you think you are? Like, what are you doing? And this woman sitting next to me just put, like a tear up, tear up just thinking about it, put her hand on my leg, said nothing, but just put her hand on my leg and just looked at me. And not like as a stop, it was as a, like, I'm here with you. I see you. And I don't know if I've ever felt that before from someone who's not my mother or my fiance. (laughs) Um, And that was one of the most special moments ever to me. Um, And it made me really realize how much being seen, truly seen, is scary. It's really scary. And it's easy for me to talk on this podcast and do this and not easy, but this is so scary. Um, But it's easy for me to, you know, talk every week on the show because it's me talking into a microphone. And I just imagine all of you on the other end, but to be in the same space as someone and to have your voice break and start just uncontrollably overflowing with emotion in a way that um, I don't normally do was so raw. I don't know another word for it. Just so raw. And it made me realize like, you know, as much as I have worked through a lot of the stuff with bullying, a lot of the stuff with being a kid who um, was beat up for being emotional, like being an empath, um, stuffed in stalls and bathrooms for having a soul being bared, um, for being in an abusive relationship, you know, just all these, all these things that made me kind of think I needed to be the caretaker and I couldn't be myself because if I did, I'd get hurt. And, none of that would have been clear if it hadn't been for that experience. And so I bring this up because yes, I was beating myself up. Yes. I even journaled about it this morning and was like, Oh my God. Like I was like bright red. I'm like, as I was writing this down, I was like, I can't believe I did that. Oh my God. This is so embarrassing. But I'm also writing this down and realizing, okay, the fact that you are having these feelings that you are not suppressing them when it comes to the situation is a huge step forward, Nicole congratulations. So I'm sharing this because in real time, I'm working through it. And to be honest, that's hard to share as a coach. Um, you know, there's, I, 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 I sometimes get nervous to show you guys what I'm also going through at the same time. Um, but I think it is important. I, I don't want you, I don't want anyone to think that I'm just done. I'm done with my personal growth and development. I'm perfect. I'm, I'm there. Um, and I'm not, I'm not, this is something that, you know, when we peel back the layers of the onion, it's towards the root. And I wouldn't have been able to get to this root if I hadn't done the other layers of the onion. So, um, it just really shows that this work is never done. And, um, I hope that this gives you all an experience or maybe even just like a thought process to, Ask yourself, am I really letting other people see me and truly see me, not just see the version I've cultivated for other people? And um, it's hard. It's really hard, but it's possible. And there are people in the world who will put their hand on your leg and just be there with you and just overflow with um, unspoken support for you. I, I truly like, I, I messaged that woman this morning and I literally just said, like, I can't tell you what that meant to me. Like, 
<laughs> that was um, so special. That was that was something I'd never experienced before from someone who was just a stranger who didn't spend 28 years with me or 10 years with me. This is someone who just met me a day ago and um, was just there with me. And that was really beautiful. So you never know what just a small touch of the leg would will will do for someone or just being there with someone will really unlock within them. Amazing. All righty. Last but not least, what is a goal I am celebrating this week? I've hinted to this earlier, but the moving schedule, um, making it easy, making it fun, making it, yeah, a little bit of like a crazier time, a little bit of a push period, but making it feel like we have never felt like a chicken with our head cut off. Um, allowing this to really be an easy move has been an incredible gift. And then also when it comes to goals, I can't not talk about that experience yesterday. I mean, when we, when it comes to emotional goals, being vulnerable, starting to really peel back those layers of the onion, continuing my own personal growth and development, I know that this is the next stair rung to get onto. And um, without a doubt, without a single doubt in my mind, this is the hardest one. <laughs> But the fact that that has been identified, the fact that that's been um, looked at and really shown the importance of, I consider that a huge thing to celebrate. So good stuff. My sweet, beautiful friends. I love you. Thank you for being here every week. It means so much to me. I love you all so much. I, I can't even, I can't even tell you how much I overflow with love for you and gratitude for um being here on this journey with me. And and just yeah, I just I could gush for hours truly. And I maybe someday I will. Maybe someday I'll do just an entire episode of gushing. But my sweet, beautiful friends, I love you. Again, if you want to get on the wait list for the Empowered Entrepreneur, so you get those discounts, so you get to be the first to know, um, the wait list uh, page, the sign up for the wait list, excuse me, is in the show notes. You can get on there very nice and easy. But also if you have any questions about the event, if you're wondering if it's for you, all of the information is on that page, but also feel free to send me a DM. You know, I am someone who is such an open book when it comes to this stuff. I want you to make sure you're making the right investment. So feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at lifecoachbaker or send me an email at hello at lifecoachbaker.com. But if you're interested, sign up for that wait list. Do it as soon as possible because this is an event uh, truly that we have poured our heart and souls into. And we're so excited for to share with you all because again, this is the event we wish we'd had when we first started. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Life Coach Baker podcast. Don't forget to go take the free quiz and find out what perfectionist type you are by visiting the link in the show notes or by going to lifecoachbaker.com forward slash quiz. Also take a moment to rate the podcast and write a review. It is the best way to get the word out there. Plus you'll get the chance of having your review read on the show. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.